This is your turn number four, part D. So I'm going to scroll over here so we can solve it. So for this problem, we're looking at a squared equal to 70. So a variable squared equal to 70. So in order to undo the square, we have to do the opposite operation, which is to square root. And what we do to one side, we must do to the other. So that's the work I need you to show. So remember, square root means what number times itself is that number. So for a squared, you should know that that means a times a. So when I'm asking you for the square root of a squared, I'm asking you, hey, looking at this term right here, what's being multiplied by itself? Well, a is being multiplied by itself. So the square root of a squared is a. And then on this side, square root of 70, well, 70 is not a perfect square. So I don't know the exact answer here. So this is going to be an irrational answer and it's one that we're going to have to estimate. But one thing you should know is that we still have a positive and negative answer. So we could write our exact answer. The exact answer is plus or minus square root of 70. So that answer is exact because just leaving it as square root of 70, whatever that is, it represents the infinite decimal that has no pattern, right? It goes on forever without a pattern. That's what makes it irrational. So just leaving it as square root of 70 accounts for all of those digits. But we're going to estimate it to the nearest tenth. So for our estimation, we know that our answer is going to be approximately our estimation. And I'll go ahead and use that plus or minus symbol. Remember, that means that the, it's a positive square root of 70 and a negative square root of 70, or whatever our decimal is. It's the positive of that decimal and the negative of that decimal. Two answers. All right, so to estimate the square root of 70, this is how we're going to do it. We have to think of square roots we do know. So I don't know the square root of 70, but I do know the square root of, and then you want to think of a square root that you know that's close to 70. Well, I know the square root of 64. That's close to 70, and it's below 70, so I'm going to write that below. So I don't know the square root of 70, but I do know the square root of 64. Now I need to think of a square root, another one that's close to square root of 70, but it's bigger. So I don't know the square root of 70, but I do know the square root of 81. So the square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of 81 is 9. So I know that the square root of 70 is somewhere between 8 and 9. Now there's a couple different ways we can look at estimating these. So the first one is to look at a number line. And for the number line, we're going to look at the square, the numbers under the square root. So this is 64, 70, and 81. So look at the spacing here. How far is 64 from 70? It's six units. And then how far is 70 from 81? That's 11 units. So now I know that this number is closer to this number, so the square root of 70 will be closer to eight. But how much closer? Well, that's why we looked at how far away it was from the bigger number as well. So you can do this on a number line, or you can do it using some long division. So if you want to do the long division way, what you're looking at is how far the end numbers are from each other. So from 64 all the way to 81, what's the full distance of the number line that I would create? That would be 17 units. Well, of those 17 units, where does 70 lie? Well, it's 6 units of the way. So I'm imagining a number line that's 17 units long and six of it is where um, 70 lies. So like we can say maybe right here. So this will be 64, 70, that's six units and then 11 units later comes 81. So you're thinking this is like what's gonna get you the percentage. 70 lies six of the 17 units away from 64 to 81. The full distance is 17 units but 70 is only six of those units. So six out of 17. So to get the decimal approximation, we know our answer is going to be eight point something because it's in between eight and eight and nine, right? So it's eight point something. To get that point something, we need to know how far it is on the number line because our number line is really looking at the square roots of all these numbers. So square root of 64 is eight and the square root of 81 is nine. And there's square root of 70 on our number line. So six out of the 17 units, that spacing stays relatively the same when you're looking at the square roots. So we're going to find that percentage really to see what our decimal should be because we're thinking of this cut up into 10 pieces. 
So we're only rounding to the nearest tenth, so let's do that. It's 6 out of 17, so that's 6 divided by 17. So 6 does not, or 17 does not go into 6 at all, so we're going to put a 0 and then a decimal and decimal here. And then we get to add a 0. Now how many times does 17 go into 60? Well, you're going to have to do a little math here. So we can just start adding 17s together. 7 plus 7 is 14. Carry the 1. That's 3. Okay, I can get another 17 in there. 4 plus 7 is 11. Carry the 1. 3, 4, 5. So, so I know for sure I can't get another 17. So I'm going to take off 51. Well, how many 17s was that? That was 1, 2, 3 17s. So then I subtract and just add up how many, if you had $51, you wanted to get to 60, how much more money do you need? Just $9. You don't need to borrow in business. All right, so then now we get to bring down a zero. And now we're looking at how many times does 17 go into 90? So I know it's at least three times, but how many more times than three? So I'm just going to go back up here to my 51 and just add 17 again, or I'll bring it down here. 51 plus 17, 8, and then 6, and then can I get another 17 in there? 15, 6, 7, 8. Okay. I got two more in there. So then this would be a 5. And then we subtract, and again, just add up. If you had $85 but you needed 90, how much more money do you need? $5, so that's just five. Now I can stop. If I wanted you to get the full decimal, you couldn't stop yet. But all I'm interested in for these problems is the tenths place, so I only need to go to the hundredths place because that's gonna tell me if I need to round this number up or not. So this five is gonna round up the three, so I'm gonna say about 8.4 is a really good estimate for this one. 8.3 is okay too. I would say 8.5 is too big. Anything bigger is um, gonna be too big of an estimate. So that's how you do it for long division, but if you want to look at the number line, this number line spaced pretty good. I'll just run through that number line construction one more time. So in order to figure out by not doing any long division, you just need to get an accurate number line. So you're going to start at 64. You're looking at the numbers underneath here to get the spacing right. So 64. Then I'm going to say, okay, six units later is 70. So I'm saying this is six units. So the length of this piece needs to be comparable to this piece in that if this represents six units, 11 is almost double that. So this length of this line has to be almost double this one. And I would say it's pretty good. So then I'm going to, and if it's not, make it longer or shorter, depending. So there's 81. So that's a pretty good representation of how far apart these numbers are. So that now because we have this good spacing, we can now look at the square roots of these numbers because the spacing is relatively the same. So now looking at the square roots, this would be eight here. This is square root of 70, which we're estimating square root of 81, which is nine. So here's square root of 70. So now I'm looking at a number line between eight and nine instead of 64 and 81. And I can mark smack dab in the middle. That looks pretty good, maybe a little bit to the right. So I'm gonna redo that. Okay, and smack dab in the middle would be about 8.5. So if this is 8, this is 8.5, and this is 9, remember, you're looking at this cut up into 10 pieces because I'm rounding to the tenths place. What would be a good estimate for this? 8.1 is not a good estimate. 8.1 would be somewhere over here, then 8.2, then 8.3, then 8.4, then 8.5. So I'd say it's between 8.3 and 8.4. I think 8.4 is a little better estimate, but 8.3 is okay as well but definitely not 8.5 or anything bigger because of the number line. We can see where it's going to fall. And so that's another way that you could have estimated and got about 8.4, plus or minus 8.4. So our answer is positive 8.4 and negative 8.4. Now our answer still is irrational, but we gave a rational estimate. It's not exactly 8.4 because 8.4 is a rational number, but our actual answer is irrational. So this is just an estimate. And that's it for part D.